what he said. All right, guys, here's the deal. We are getting back old school. We're getting back old school here, and uh, I think you guys are gonna like this. Here's the deal. If you go back and look at my old, old videos, uh, I did a wire tuck. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you on the front end, it's painful to watch because my videos back then, I think this was early 2016, were very bad, and uh, hopefully they've gotten better. I don't know. But uh, it, the information is good, and I do the passenger side wire tuck. When we're talking about wire tuck, this is this area right here. That's what I did. And everybody's always asking, hey, what about the uh, driver's side? Well, I didn't do a driver's side video back then. I did a write-up on it. But since so many people have asked, today we're going to do the driver's side. Okay, guys, so let's kind of get into this a little bit and uh, you know talk about why you want to do this. The main reason you want to do this is this huge mess right here of wiring you got um, just looks bad. And, and from the factory, they actually had a cover. Ford put a plastic cover over that to kind of conceal it a little bit. Um, but, you know, obviously we're gonna go a step farther. So the idea here is we're gonna take this harness here that runs across the strut tower and this harness here, and we're gonna move them inside the fender well. Now, the reason this works out is because you're not moving them very far. The wiring actually goes back through here. So when you move it into the fender well, you don't really need any added length. I mean, they're depending on how crazy you want to get with it, you might need a little added length, um, but you can actually do this entire thing without uh, adding any wire, clipping any ends, anything like that. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna re relocate this harness, this harness, the uh, solenoid, and as much of this wiring up here as we can inside the fender well, and then I'm gonna relocate the coil right here so it kinda covers up this hole right here where the wiper washer uh, tank is. And basically what you're going to end up with is all clean in this area. Ideally, moving the battery would be great. A lot of people don't want to do that, so you don't have to. But that, that kind of finishes the whole deal. And then this whole area is just devoid of any junk. So let's get busy. All right, first step, obviously you gotta take the wheel off and then uh, you're gonna take the center fender liner out and to get that out, there's nothing to it. You got just little screws all the way around and then you got some Christmas trees in there and I'll get you some light here shortly, but you just got the little Christmas trees, pull this center fender liner out. You are gonna have to wrestle with it. They can be kind of a pain, but you just gotta just work it out. It'll come out. So let's get that fender liner out. Guys, obviously, this one's been out because these are not the uh, these are not the original fasteners. They're a lot larger from the originally, and then none of the screws were in, so somebody's been in here once before. But getting this out, there's nothing scientific about it. You just pull and wrestle and cuss. This is kind of what we're uh, we're going to be doing. This hole right here is the one you want to use. Now, most of the wiring will go through it, but you do have to make this hole a little bit bigger. And um, again, there's not really a very scientific way to do it, but uh, typically, like a hole saw, or you can you know take a take a grinder and just grind a little bit, make that hole just a little bit bigger. Again, this is on the back side of the shock tower, so you're not going to see it. You know, no one's going to know. Don't even sweat it, but this it'll is where your be our little secret, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this will be our little secret. But this is where the wiring's gonna come in. That's basically following the same route, and then we're gonna run it up along here, and then we're gonna use whatever has to come back out is gonna go through this hole right here, and I'll show you how we hide that here in just a second. It's one good thing the, the back car was pretty. It was in good shape. But
Come on, baby. Still got fluid in it. Yeah. Probably because it don't work. Go. Probably not. <laughs> nope. That's right. What are you doing, Caleb? Yeah, 13. Yeah, we might as well take that battery out, too. It's just sitting there. The first step in any build is what, Ken? Disconnect the negative battery cable. <laughs> but we don't like to follow rules here. We just kind of do our own thing. Okay guys, so here we are. Got the battery out. Now, quick tip. What you need to do, if uh, if you're kind of a noob, which is okay, take a picture, especially of your solenoid. So you can, you know, that way you have some sort of reference as far as what goes on what side of the solenoid. That'll definitely be helpful. And um, so the next step now is we're gonna start unhooking all the grounds. We're gonna, you know, obviously unhook the coil and all that, and we're gonna free up every connection down here. You're gonna unplug everything. So again, that's why I say, now Now these wires down here, you don't need to worry about because they have specific plugs, so they can only plug in to what they came unplugged from. So don't worry about that. The main thing is just make sure you got your solenoid wiring hooked up or you'll know it when you hook the battery back up. I did not know uh, first time I did this back around 2000 on my 89 GT backside of this is a ground so when I did it I just kind of zip tied it up as high as I could out of sight inside the fender well and I couldn't get the car to start couldn't figure out why the reason is that's your ground so there's my noob move yes it was 18 years ago cut me some slack but this is your ground it's got to be screwed against the body on the metal or the car won't start so anyway Got the solenoid out, got all your wires unhooked, and um, now we're gonna start moving these harnesses. Go back here and do the fun part, shoving them through the hole. All right guys, so one thing you need to know, because you've got a small hole that you're running through, you wanna run the bigger harness through first and uh, not that this one is necessarily that much bigger but you've got this big clump so you want to do run this harness in first and uh, basically just start stubbing stuff through the hole you are gonna have to wrestle it because this thing has been is taped to go where it was so you're not gonna break anything it's just wire Gotta shove the big step on through the hole. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Demonetized.
All right, guys, this is where it kind of gets a little hairy. You got to straighten this out and then pull it through at the same time. But luckily, you can work both sides of it. And again, this is just wires. You're not going to hurt it unless you cut them. Don't cut them. Huh? Almost, almost, almost. Boom. Like this. <sighs> All right. I'm just gonna pull that one through. Good to go. So this is pretty much what you're going to be left with once you got both your harnesses run through the hole. Again, when you're making the hole bigger, it doesn't have to be a lot bigger, just a little bit. Um, leave your test port out. That's your, uh, not that you will ever use it probably, but leave that out. But basically, you've just got these two harnesses here. Everything else in here is gone. See, it's nice and clean. Your strut tower is clean. You don't have this big harness running right there. All right, guys, next up. Go ahead and take your battery tray out. The reason you want to do that is because you've got this harness under here that's the under that runs harness. under that battery box. Headlight yeah, harness. the headlight harness. We're going to move that and this ground. So take your battery tray out. Definitely a good time to, to clean. You may have leaves and a bunch of other stuff underneath it. To get the battery tray out, you just have these two bolts here. Nothing to it. Yank that out. And hopefully they don't strip like this one is. Okay guys, so this harness that runs under the battery box, it's got this hard like plastic piece in there to, to keep it rigid. So basically what you gotta do is cut this tape off and pull that out so you can bend the wires around and get them back into the fender well. So just take you a razor blade, make you a slice, pull the tape off, pull that off, you're good to go. back up now we can actually move it so we're going to relocate this headlight harness from out here we're going to go in through this hole which i'll show you that in just a second but that's also going to clean up this area here in front of the battery I was getting ahead of myself. We're not quite ready to go back underneath. Last and final thing is we're gonna move this hood pull, the, uh, the hood cable. And actually I'm gonna need a longer extension, but just unhook that quarter inch bolt and uh, swap that out. Let me grab an extension. So this is 
this is what you're left with uh, when you move to the underside. Was we ran our uh, the hood pole through there. We'll put that up and then get your harnesses here. And those are gonna go up as high as you can get them and out of the way. That way when you put your inner fender liner back in, you won't be able to see it. So what we're gonna start doing now is make some connections and uh, wrap this up. Just barely. All right guys, so status update. Um, just kind of making some of the connections here, getting them all tucked up. Again, this is not rocket science and there's no right way really to do this. You just try to get it all hidden and up high enough that it's gonna be inside the fender well. And, uh, like you look right here, your headlight from the uh, headlight harness, it's close. Like there is not much. It'll plug in, but it's tight. We're just gonna start hooking back everything to the uh, solenoid and uh, making our grounds on the back side go along pretty well. Like I said, before you start putting everything back together, throw the battery back on and just make sure it started. Oh, yeah, no. Woo! Woo! Yes, sir. You like that, don't you? I like that. All right. Set this battery tray in. Okay, 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 okay. Didn't that work out perfect? Uh huh. Got one. All right, guys, so here's the deal. I know this video went kind of long, but this is what the uh, end result. Now, obviously, we've got this plug here. We're going to make that look pretty, and we're going to replace this. So I'm not 100% done, but you can see now how clean that is. I like the coil down here. You can leave it up here, but I like it down there. But there you go. I mean, how much better does that look than it did before? I mean, that's a huge difference. So... That is what's up guys there is your driver's side wire tuck for you know a little bit of time and essentially no money actually zero dollars you can clean up your engine bay do it on an afternoon cool project so there you go in the meantime if you like this video please give me a big thumbs up make sure you smash that subscribe button we'll be back with more fox body stuff at a later date adios